You're listening to WQEE 99.1 FM, The Key in Noonan, Georgia, home of Braves Country with Mac McGee and the armchair quarterbacks, weekdays, 3 p.m. Eastern to 5 p.m. Eastern, right here on The Key and YouTube.com at Braves Country. Hey, Braves Country, I'm Mac McGee. Join us for Pitch by Pitch, Play by Play. The classic call of Braves Country Baseball. We're bringing you Atlanta Braves Baseball all year long. Jump into our pregame show, Braves Country Today, just before first pitch. Stick around for the postgame show, Braves Country Tonight, where we will open up the phone lines and react to your calls or your comments all year long. That's Braves Country Radio, pitch by pitch, play by play, your home for the classic call of Braves Country Baseball. It's the best in sports and entertainment. And get locked in and locked down with Rhino Radio Penitentiary, 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. with your host, me, Ryan O'Neill. Each and every morning, right here with the best in sports and entertainment, all the way from professional sports to college sports to River Dragons hockey and everything in between, including some of the very best local and national guests. It's the Rhino Radio Penitentiary, 7 a.m. to 10 a.m., Monday through Friday, right here on 99.1 FM WQEE. Hockey season, and that means new merch over at OurDragonsMerch.com. Get the latest designs and some of our fun new souvenirs ahead of what's sure to be a great hockey season. Celebrate another season of River Dragons hockey by getting a new look to wear on game days. Or surprise the big-time sports fan in your life with a new keepsake that will make them a River Dragons fan for life. Order online right now at OurDragonsMerch.com. That's the letter R, DragonsMerch.com. We'll see you at the rink. Here's good news. There's still a need for hundreds of thousands of cybersecurity professionals in the U.S. right now. And my computer career is training people to help meet the demand. No IT experience? No problem. Take the free career evaluation today. Start your new life as an IT pro in as little as four months. Grants covering up to 53% of the cost are available to those who qualify. It's not rocket science. It's mycomputercareer.edu. Are you looking for a reliable dental practice that not only cares about your teeth, but is friendly to work with? How about one that offers great deals and new patient promotions? Well, your search is over. Most Valuable Smiles in downtown Eatonton, Georgia, is committed to giving you the biggest and brightest smile. Right now, get a $99 new patient special, including x-rays and exam. Maybe you're looking for veneers. Most Valuable Smiles veneer special includes one free veneer with every five purchased. Or get that bright white smile you've always wanted by taking advantage of an exclusive $100 off Zoom whitening treatment when you book today. And don't forget that 2022 is almost over. That means most insurance policies will reset by the new year, and to avoid losing that extra money, you need to use it or lose it. Book an appointment today with Most Valuable Smiles in downtown Eatonton to lock in these exclusive deals. Call 706-623-0318 or visit mostvaluablesmiles.com. Brand new for the 2024 Braves Country Radio broadcast season. Along with pitch by pitch, play by play, the classic call of Braves Country Baseball, we will bring you a live pregame show and postgame show. Phone lines wide open for you to call, react, or ask your questions along with the chat. That's Braves Country today pregame, Braves Country tonight postgame. We'll see you in 2024. Armchair. There's something, I'll say there's something kind of about a kid that's never played baseball. (laughs) We have been hoodwinked, bamboozled, and flat out deceived. Why did you get so drunk? You got drunk. (laughs) I'm just really exhausted. What's in that cup? Rum and Cokes? Do you have any idea how important you you are? Really, this is what you're doing? What do you want to do tonight? The same thing we do every night. Try to take over the world. 106 miles to Chicago. We got a full tank of gas, half a pack of cigarettes. It's dark, and we're wearing sunglasses. Hit it. Armchair. YouTube Live. Radio Station. The radio station you can call your own. 
must like about our station? I like everything. It's always on my radio. We never stop the music, except for now, when I talk. You're listening to Braves Country with Mac McGee and the Armchair Quarterbacks. We're here live weekdays, 3 p.m. Eastern to 5 p.m. Eastern, WQEE 99.1 FM, The Key. And simulcasting on YouTube.com forward slash at Braves Country. Your first choice for Southern sports. Hey, I'm Mac McGee. I don't know much, but I know one thing. Richard Holdridge from Sports Beats here today, baby. Let's get it. Oh, Mac, I am so excited to be on your show. I mean, this is a crossover show. You were on my show in uh, the I'm last sure. hour. WQEE, what an incredible lineup. We start with Rod Peterson and New and go right into my show, and then we got your show from 12 to 5. I mean, you couldn't ask for a better sports lineup in the Atlanta market. I'm ready to talk uh, whatever sports topic you got. I know we got pitchers and catchers reporting, and we just had the Super Bowl last week. I mean, college basketball. I mean, I'm ready to fill out my bracket. We're about a month away from March Madness, but it's an exciting time for sports. Yeah, howdy, hi, and how the hell are you? Hope y'all are having a great day. Uh, what do we got? President's Day going on. So, uh, man, that. So, you're a little long in the tooth as I am. Remember when we used to get, like, it was George Washington's birthday and then it was uh, Lincoln's birthday? And I remember at the time thinking, man, we sure do skip a lot of other uh, presidents. <laughs> but now. We sure did. They, they, they put it all in one. Which I guess is nice. Um, as far as President's Day goes, does it not? Is it not the one that sneaks up on you more than anything else nowadays? Because I had to be reminded by my wife like last night that, that Monday's is President's Day. I, I had no earthly idea. Absolutely, and I think that we're just used to you know President's Day getting it off. That's usually the Daytona 500, the NBA All-Star Game. Uh, but I'd like to see the Super Bowl being held on President's Day. That way we get that Monday off from the Super Bowl so we don't have to come into work. Uh, but, yeah, I'm just enjoying myself. I mean, it's a good President's Day and uh, just a lot of sports to talk about. I mean, we, we get into baseball definitely going up. And then uh, we also have, you know, the second half of the NBA season. Uh, college basketball regular season is winding down. Uh, just a lot to get into. That's why you vote McGee 2024 in this year's presidential election. Because number there one thing go. on my platform, we actually talked this about this on my show a couple weeks ago, how I'm running for president, write-ins only. Um, the number, first thing I'm signing into, into, into legislation when I walk in is the day after the Super Bowl is a national holiday. And I mean everything shut down. We're not just talking about schools and government jobs. I'm talking about we're closing everything. It's going to be like Christmas. Everything is shut down. Well, I'm all for it. Uh, definitely we could definitely use that break especially uh being up as late as we are watching the super bowl and you know as a 49ers fan i mean i really couldn't sleep that night anyway i was so heartbroken uh, they had so many chances to win that super bowl it, it's, it's just brutal it's, it leaves a bad taste it's brutal it, and really three heartbreaking super bowl losses in the last 13 years i've witnessed all of them in my adult years spoiled as a child uh, just grew up watching the 49ers win five Super Bowls, and then, you know, they had that, that like? decade of a drought. Yeah, so. It's like, man, man, did I used to hate the 49ers. I don't have that yeah. hate for them anymore, but it was like, good Lord. 49ers and Cowboys have been replaced with the Patriots and the Chiefs. Absolutely. Um, yeah, it's it's like. I, and I've made this argument. This is the first year my wife took Monday after the Super Bowl off. I've taken it off for years. I let people know ahead of time. Wherever I'm working, I'm not going to be there. Well, but, 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 no, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm willing to be there on Christmas, Christmas Eve, the day after Christmas, whatever you need. Day after Super Bowl, I'm not there. This is the first year that she actually did it. I think she finally got it. I was like, we, we host one of the biggest Super Bowl parties you'll ever see every year. And the next day is about. You know, just wait, just getting the cobwebs out, laying around doing nothing. And it's absurd that we that anybody is asked to go to work the day after the Super Bowl. I think you said in the first round, 123 million. What? Yep. Yeah. So which, yeah, the casual football fan really had a nice Super Bowl. It was the second overtime game, and it was 
the longest Super Bowl, and it was just great. Just a great atmosphere. I love the commercials. Usher performing at halftime. It was just a really good Super Bowl all around. I would contest to you that less work gets done the day after the Super Bowl than what gets done on Christmas Eve. Like, no, even if you go to work, you're phoning it in. You're just kind of... If if you're in a cubicle, you're just moving your mouse around a lot, going, "All right, <laughs> I'm moving, I'm doing stuff." It's it's absurd. Um, let's go ahead and dive back into Major League Baseball. We were talking about in the first hour. We were we were uh, talking about the Braves and what the team would look like. We kind of went over the uh, the the bullpen and whatnot, but I I did want to talk about the lineup coming into this year because. The way I have it laid out, you, it's going to look very, very similar to last year. And, and why would you change a whole lot? They broke all kinds of records, home runs, runs scored, all kinds of stuff. But the biggest question I think where people have is last year, Michael Harris II was batting ninth. The catcher, the catching position at the beginning of the year was up higher in the order. They ended up hitting around sixth or seventh, depending on the matchup. This is how I'm going to lay it out. Are you ready for this? We've got Oh, I'm ready. We got Acuna leading off. You can't do anything with him. I know you would love to have that that special talent in the middle of the order, but he's he's just man, he's a different breed. You cannot expect him to take pitches. Just let him lead off and do his thing. Ozzy yeah, I mean, Albie. Yeah. I'm sorry, do what? No, I mean, uh, that's the perfect leadoff hitter. I mean, 3 337 batting average, 73 stolen bases. I mean, I know he hits for power, but you got to put him in the top of the lineup. Exactly, and people, I think people, well, the old, old the old seam heads worry too much about where a guy's batting if he's batting too high in the order. Realize that's really only relevant to the first time through the lineup. After that, who cares? Ozzy Albie's needs to go back to the number two position. He 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 played phenomenally. They played around with that. Or if you remember the beginning of the year, they had Olsen up there. That was a disaster. So you get righty, switch hitter. Back to righty with Riley. Austin Riley batting third. And then Matt Olsen batting fourth. I think that was perfect last year. You got to put Ozuna back at the DH position at the number five spot. You talk about a guy that took off at the end. My God. You, to think about what he did last year compared to where he was if i mean do you remember april people were wanting to not just trade him dfa him and i remember we, we had a couple of people coming on braves country radio they, they were watching the games and they kept putting in the chat they're like no nope, stick with them stick with them and at the beginning i was with them towards the end of that slump i was like man i don't know but they at least got to bench him they got to do something and he took off right right as soon as we got to that miami series he took off so you put it, but here's the biggest question. Who bats number six? Because last year, a lot of the times it was Eddie Rosario, but you're talking about a veteran, a guy who is very comfortable in the Braves organization. I will contend this. I would rather see, I don't think they're going to do it, but I would rather see Michael Harris, the second move up to six spot. He's earned it. He's earned it. Right. And so yes. you keep that lefty, righty, lefty with Harris, and then the catcher position at the uh, seven spot. And I, th I think you're going to see a very s similar platoon, Murphy and Travis Darno. Keep RC down at the eight spot. I know there's times where he's just an automatic out, but there's times where he launches the ball. And people can hate what they want, but realize we pay him $2 million a year to be one of the best offensive short stops in the game and occasionally run into one and then put and then put the young kid jerry kellenick at the at the bottom of the order the number nine slot and the reason being if you have him at the number nine slot who's on deck and he's gonna see fastballs right so that's my thoughts i'd like to get your thoughts on it i really like that lineup mac uh, i think that the braves really don't really need to change a whole lot i mean you look at what their offense has done. I mean, even a, a guy like Orlando Arcia hit 17 home runs and 65 RBIs on a 
on an average team, and that's that's production. I mean, that's what we were hoping for with a, a lot of these players ten years ago. And you know, you have a Gold Glove catcher in Sean Murphy. You talked about platooning with Travis Darno. If Marcelo Zuno wants to take a, a night off, I mean, you could throw Travis Darno into that DH spot. Uh, I do think that the Atlanta Braves are just going to continue to improve their offense. Their pitching got better. I think their bullpen got better. They won 104 games last year. I think that the Braves are, are on pace to win that many games this year. I mean, if you look at the landscape of the National League, yes, the, the Dodgers got better offensively with Shohei Itani, uh, but I still think there's some question marks with their pitching. I mean, we know that the Phillies are going to be good, but I think the fa the favorites to win that division is going to be the Braves. And then if you look at the NL Central, I mean, the Brewers, you know, the Cubs, the Cardinals, they're going to be in the mix. Uh, I really think that the Braves are the team to beat in the National League, even with their playoff woes against the Phillies the last two seasons. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Uh, so I got the Pocota rankings pulled up, right? And for people who are not familiar with that, Baseball Perspectives puts out the Pocota rankings. It's all based on what the rosters are today. So – Throw this out the window if there's a big trade or a big signing in a few weeks, right? You still got some pretty big names out there on the trade on the free agent market, which is insane to me that you could have guys. I mean, how in the world did we get into middle February and the Cy Young Award winner from last year is still a free agent? How is it that I think the most important piece of that entire Texas Rangers roster, we're in February and he's a free agent? in Jordan Montgomery. So put take this with a grain of salt. Folks who didn't see it over the weekend, uh, Maryfield, Whit Maryfield signed a deal, one, one year $8 million deal with the Philadelphia Phillies. That was a big deal three, four years ago. Whit Maryfield is at the end of his rope. They're actually paying kind of high for a guy that's probably going to be a platoon player. Um, I mean, the Phillies get rolling. He could very well just be a bench piece. But anyways... Here's the Pocota rankings. These are what they are assimilating to. This is what they believe is going to happen. Sometimes I see them way high and way low, and this is what most of your sports books bet uh, when you see the season amount of win totals. If, if you're on a, a local sports book or out in Vegas and you see, well, why in the world are the – are the? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just give you an example. The Philadelphia Phillies – Pakota right now is 84.8. And you might go to the, to the book and go, Phillies are only 85 and a half over under. This is where they get the information from, right? The Atlanta Braves right now are being projected by, by Pakota, baseball per perspectives, which is the Bible of, of uh, baseball, to win the NL East by 16 games. Wow. You don't see that very often. They, they, by the way, they have about the, we're, we're a tad, I mean, we're talking about decimals, uh, in front of what the Dodgers are being projected of beating the Arizona Diamondbacks who went to the world series last year by 16 games. So what they're telling you is that they believe the NL East and the NL West are already wrapped up and the real race in the national league is going to be the NL central and in the American league. There, there is not that big of a of a gap in any of their divisions. The biggest gap you have, Houston Astros over Texas. But once again, Texas may not be done in, in the free agent market. But I could not believe it when I saw it. So I signed up for the uh, baseball Bible, I don't know, a week ago, and I first opened up the, the Pocota rankings. I was like, wait, is this for this year? I had to keep refreshing. I was like, 16 games? Because you think of Philadelphia – is is the boogeyman if you're if you're a Braves fan, right? Like that's the one right. team you don't want to see in the playoffs. Sixteen yeah. games that that is phenomenal. Yeah, for some reason they just flip the switch when they get to the postseason. The Philadelphia Phillies are not a great regular season team, but I'll be honest, if I'm a Braves fan, I do not want to see the Phillies in the playoffs anymore. I don't want to see Bryce Harper. I don't want to see uh, Trey Turner or JT Realmuto. I, I don't want to see any of these players. And I'm looking at the Phillies roster. I mean, they, they still have 
you know, Ranger Suarez. I mean, he was a Braves killer in the playoffs. I mean, really, the goal is, you know, to get home field in the playoffs, but to avoid the Phillies. Uh, there's a, actually back there's a team that I think that they might go worst to first. Uh, they've always been a great organization. The St. Louis Cardinals, they only won 71 games last year. I think that they could win the NL Central. And I know Braves fans don't want to see the Cardinals either. I mean, they've had their history with any team that they face. I mean, they've had their history with them in the postseason. Yeah, but but I will say this in recent memory, uh, since we'll say about two, this team, so like 2020 on, 2021 on, this Braves team has owned St. Louis, um, and I would not be worried about facing the. I, there, so there's a part of me that says you're right. I don't want to. I want to see the Phillies. God dog it, but man, there's a part of me that says, "Let's go, bring them," because I want to knock them right in the nose. A little bit of that has to do with one little thing. When when we do the play by play of Braves Country Radio, obviously all fans can come in. There's no, you know, we're not asking to to see your Braves fan ID. They are the most obnoxious fan base, bar none, in all of not just all of baseball, in all of sports. And they come in, and they the smack talk that has we've had to endure the last two years. There's a part of me that just wants to go in and smack them in the nose. But I get the idea of it'd be a little better if they just didn't make the playoffs in general. <laughs> I yeah, I, mean, I, I do think the Phillies are going to be the wild card. I, w- I would think they would be too. I keep refreshing my pages every single morning and every si- throughout the day. For Lent, by the way, I gave up social media at night. I, t- I told my wife, okay. I, said, I was like, I'm plugging up my phone. I'm sitting in the back. If you try to text me or whatever, good luck because the last three or four hours I'm done. But I refresh, and the first th- what I'm always looking for more than anything else – who did the Philly sign? Because this Philadelphia team goes into this season, I'm not that worried about them. But you keep thinking there's going to be a hammer coming. Absolutely. They always spend a lot of money, and I know in theory they signed their big free agent in re-signing Aaron Nola. I think the biggest thing that we could take away from a good off season, along with what we've already done, but there is starting to be and don't look, call me crazy, whatever. For the last few months, I've told everybody just suck it up and deal with it. Max Fried is going to be a free agent at the end of this season. And in 2024, he's going to hit the market. And in 2024, November 2024, the Braves are not going to back up the truck and he's going to go elsewhere. I used to think Dodgers because he's from uh, Southern California, but they've spent a lot of money. This year, and they, they're going to expect some of those guys to, you know, step it up. Dodgers going to have much bigger problems than worrying about starting pitching in 2025. So, I've been thinking, okay, it could be San Diego. They're taking a step back this year. He, he could go to the Padre, whatever. There's a, they're, they're starting to see some tea leaves. We may actually bring him back. One of the I things, think so, too. Yeah. So, one of the things that everyone's always pointed to is that he's a Southern Cal kid, da 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 da. He does, you know, he doesn't want to be here. You realize Max Fried has spent, they said roughly eighty-five to ninety percent of his off season in the Atlanta area, working out with everybody. So that's a great sign. The other thing is, the Braves put a pretty good offer on the table to bring in Aaron Nola. He chose to stay with Philadelphia because that's where he wants to pitch. And the $22 million mark that everybody keeps talking about, how the Braves won't go higher than 20 they, they were offering him over twenty five. So if, if you're willing to offer Aaron Nola that, why wouldn't you offer Max Fried that? And if you can get Max Fried signed by opening day, a guy who has dealt with injuries, wouldn't you think that he would rather take... So he'll be 31 at free agency. A five-year deal... I don't think it would quite take 30. So I'll say five years, 135. Five, five years, 140. Somewhere in that neighborhood. As opposed to going to free agency, think you're going to get it, and then you're sitting out there like Blake Snell is right now. We will be back in a flash here on Braves Country Radio. 
Enjoy sun-drenched days, epic stays, and plenty of room to roam in Greater Fort Lauderdale. Our hotels, attractions, and restaurants have taken the Visit Lauderdale Safe and Clean Pledge so you can relax and explore with confidence. When you're ready for that well-deserved staycation, our 23 miles of golden beaches await. Find wide-open spaces to hike, bike, kayak, and paddleboard. Visit your favorite attractions, then dine out in style in dining rooms or al fresco on waterfront patios. Learn more at sunny.org. Hey, Braves Country, this is Mac McGee with Braves Country Radio. We are bringing you pitch by pitch, play by play of your Atlanta Braves all year long. Please like and subscribe today. It's free, and it helps us bring you more of the game we all love. Braves Country Radio, your home for the classic call of Braves Country Baseball. Hey, sports fans, it's Rod Peterson here, host of The Rod Peterson Show, inviting you to join us daily for two hours of Atlanta's funnest sports talk right here on WQEE. I say fun because it is. You've never heard a show like it because we make the listeners a part of the show. Every day between noon and 2 p.m. Eastern, you'll hear plenty of the best sports talk, including the latest on the Falcons, the Braves, and more. And who knows, you might even hear you. That's The Rod Peterson Show, daily at noon, right here on WQEE 99.1 FM. Are you looking for a reliable dental practice that not only cares about your teeth, but is friendly to work with? How about one that offers great deals and new patient promotions? Well, your search is over. Most Valuable Smiles in downtown Eatonton, Georgia, is committed to giving you the biggest and brightest smile. Right now, get a $99 new patient special, including x-rays and exam. Maybe you're looking for veneers. Most Valuable Smiles veneer special includes one free veneer with every five purchased. Or get that bright white smile you've always wanted by taking advantage of an exclusive $100 off Zoom whitening treatment when you book today. And don't forget that 2022 is almost over. That means most insurance policies will reset by the new year, and to avoid losing that extra money, you need to use it or lose it. Book an appointment today with Most Valuable Smiles in downtown Eatonton to lock in these exclusive deals. Call 706-623-0318 or visit mostvaluablesmiles.com. It all starts with just one thing. When recycling, rinse out jars and cans and avoid recycling wax paper or paper soiled with food. This will reduce recycling contamination. Find tips and more at OneThingUS.com. What's your one thing? Braves country today. We're talking Southern sports. We go live three to five weekdays right here on WQEE. Braves country today. Southern sports talk with the voice of Braves country baseball, Mac McGee. Joined every day from sports analysts from all over Braves country. Talking college football, the NFL, Major League Baseball, and what's trending in the world of sports. Braves country today. We go live three to five weekdays right here on WQEE. Well, I think the general manager, Alex Anthopoulos, has been wheeling and dealing. I mean, locking up mainly the core players for the Braves for years. And now Max Fried is the next uh, call of business. I mean, they have got to find a way to extend him. He's 30 years old. I mean, he didn't pitch a whole lot last season because of injuries. He only pitched 77 innings. But, I mean, you look at what Max Fried has done. I mean, a 2.55 earned run average in 2022 he had a 2.48 earned run average. He is a big postseason pitcher. Uh, that is a type of pitcher that they need. And, and if they don't re-sign him, I mean, it might be a Freddie Freeman, Matt Olson situation where I know a lot of Braves fans were hurt that they let Freddie Freeman go to the Dodgers. But the trade-off was Matt Olson came in and he's from Atlanta and he had a just a great career so far with the Braves. Uh, I'd hate to see Max Free go, and he's in the prime of his career. He's only 30 years old, but uh, really, if, if he's going after big money, I mean, there's other teams with the bigger payrolls that's probably going to offer him big money, and I, I don't know if the Braves can match it, but we'll see what General Manager uh, Anthopoulos does to try to get him re-signed. I, I think bare minimum it would take five years. At 31 years old, let's say... Okay, so so five to twenty five would be one twenty five, right? I don't think right. he would do that. But what if we do add a cut? Let, let's say it's twenty seven. So then you're talking about the one thirty five number that, that that I keep looking at one thirty five to one forty. I think from just a peace of mind and knowing this is where I'm going to be, let's do it. Let's go. And he knows if he stays, 
he has a very good opportunity to possibly be on a team that wins not just this year, but he could. So he, he's already got the ring from twenty one. He he could end up with three, four rings before it's all said and done. So I I just uh, I'm looking at it as if they're going to get it done. I, it normally has to get done during the regular season. It just does. Because if he goes out and pitches lights out and he gets into July and August, there's not much of a chance that he doesn't go. I got to go see what I can do in free agency, guys. Right. And when it happens, I think someone's going to overpay. He's a guy that I think could possibly. I know he's a long shot right now, but he could be the he he could serious argument for Cy Young candidate this year. What, if he goes out and wins that Cy Young, you know he's going. You know, you know he's going to want. About the best thing that could happen for the Braves if they don't sign him by opening day is he gets some minor injury where he goes on the IL for like we'll, we'll say. You know, three weeks, four weeks, and maybe at that time point, because screw this, man. Where do I sign? Because <laughs> I want to make sure that my family's set. But that's, I mean, that's the big fish for the Braves. They're not bringing anyone else in. They're um, for folks who may not be familiar with this. Most of y'all that listen to the show know that, but uh, I'll just lay it out once again. Um, the Braves have about six to seven million dollars. Depending on who you ask, there's three outlets that do it. Six to seven million dollars before they hit the next threshold of the, for lack of a better term, salary cap. It's a salary tax, and this would be the third. If you hit that third threshold, they've already passed the first two. If you hit that third threshold, not only do the taxes get much higher, so it means you're, you're going to be paying through the nose, but you also lose a draft pick. And Anthopolis saying about losing draft picks. So I think they're done. They're going to save a little bit of that hay for the for the trading deadline. But for anyone who thinks they're going to bring in some big fish on free agency or at the trading deadline, it's that ship has sailed. Because he just can't, he just honestly cannot spend that kind of money. And the Braves ownership's done a really good job of saying, hey, here's some leeway, but at the same token, they they don't want to go to that next threshold. What say you? Well, I just think the Braves just need to just continue just riding the ship, just making sure that uh, they don't spend too much and overpay for somebody. Uh, I really like this core players uh, going into the 2024 season, and they really have the longevity just to compete like you mentioned, it's World Series or bust. I mean, this season, uh, they've got to get to the World Series. Now, whether or not they win it or not, I mean, we've seen the Houston Astros have already won two World Series titles. i, I got to say, though, I-, I can't believe that the defending World Series champion, Texas Rangers, aren't even projected to make the playoffs. I mean, that's just an insult, and I feel the Texas Rangers should be disrespected there. Yeah, but we re- re- realize they've lost a couple of guys. Now, they may sign them. I still think Jordan Montgomery ends up back in Texas. I really do. I do too. But there's been a lot of people kicking the tires on Montgomery. Here's a strange thing. So the Boston Red Sox right now are being projected 79 wins, last in the AL East. Jordan Montgomery has spent his entire offseason in the Boston, Massachusetts area. They have spent no money. They traded away Chris Sale. I thought originally when they did it, it was to bring in someone like a Montgomery, maybe even Blake Snell. So we got a guy that comes on the show pretty regularly, Sergeant Timus Wooten. He's a diehard Red Sox fan. And for the past three or four years, he just he's beside himself. They have spent zero dollars. So you put that aside, but as, but as far as Texas is concerned, I mean, they are the Pakota rankings. They're right there. They're right there with, uh, I don't, really, they're they're projecting Minnesota to have four more wins than Texas, N- almost ninety to eighty six. Minnesota, really, I'm not buying that one at all. Minnesota, remember, has lost quite a few guys in free agency. 
I think Texas. I don't know if Texas will, would win their division, but I think they'll get in the playoffs. But you never know the hangover effect from from uh, World Series. Well, one thing for sure is Mac. I, I think the Oakland A's uh, might be the worst team in Major League Baseball. I mean, uh, they they might be breaking the record for the most losses in a, in a Major League season. I mean, this is. Really a lame duck franchise that uh, is not going to have a home. Uh, I don't know when they could possibly go or relocate. Uh, but uh, what do you think about that? And possible Major League expansion. I know uh, two two cities that come to mind, Portland and Nashville. But I know you probably have your favorite cities that you might want to see expansion in Major League Baseball. Or Do you think that we should stick with the, the teams that we have? So I, I think Nashville definitely deserves a team. Portland to me is a dumpster fire and there's no reason to put a professional team in there. Um, the stuff that's been going on there the last few years, and I'm talking about from, from the political side of it, it is a dangerous place to live. Right. So you're going right. to, so, so if you ask them to hold, to have a team, who the hell is going to be there in 10 years to go to the games? If I got a second team and honestly, this is my first pick and it's long overdue. Put a team back in Montreal. I was going to say the same thing. Bring back the Montreal Expos. Right. Use the same name. They probably won't. They'll do something goofy and name it something that no one will relate to. I still have the Expos hat. I've got one. I only wear it because they're no longer exist. Because in theory, that's like wearing a Washington Nationals hat. But I separate the two. I know they're supposed to be the same franchise. Well, I tell you what, Mac, that 94 team should have won the World Series. Uh, that team was ready. The, I, I really, as a baseball fan, hurt so bad when when they canceled the World Series with a baseball strike. Uh, but, yeah, that 94 Expos team was special. You had Hall of Famers. You had Larry Walker. I mean, just an incredible team. Uh, yeah, I'd love to see the Expos back. Uh, Nashville, you know, th- that's, a, that's a very thriving and, market. Um, and, you know, here's the thing. Like the misconception is that they didn't support their team. They supported their team pre strike. And then after the strike happened, they canceled the season, which ticked off a lot of fans because they had the best record in the National League at the time. They lost a lot of fans. But the Expos, right. to me, is the one that makes the most sense. You're talking about heavily populated area up there in the Northeast. You're talking about it would slide them in so easily. Honest engine. If you put the Expos in, my first inclining is to take the Braves out of the NL East and to put them either in the AL Central or NL Central. Right. Because it makes a lot more sense to put the Braves in a in a division that that people can go travel to watch them play the Cardinals or the the you know the Kansas City Royals or even you know we're talking about Chicago being you know not that far of a drive. As opposed to, they're not going to Philadelphia. They're not going to New York. Heck, it feels almost like a different country. They're not going to Miami. They need to take the Braves out of the NL East, put Montreal in it, and put the Braves in the same division as the Nashville. Or what they may end up doing is, and this will be one of the stipulations that could come into the negotiations that I've read, is that... If Nashville gets a team, it's got to be an American League team. Because living in that area for quite some time, when you get local baseball there for years, you've gotten Braves, but it's also Reds and Cardinals country. So the three main teams that are sitting right there, and you got Nashville in the middle essentially, they're, they're, if, if they agree to it, they're going to want them in the American League, which I'm fine with that as well. You put oh, yeah. them in the American League. You put the uh, the Expos in the National League, and then you just slide the Braves into a different division. And hey, Mac, would, what about these two cities, Indianapolis and Charlotte? Maybe after down the road, but I I just believe Nashville and uh, Montreal are, are better choices. At this point, I agree. Um, I I do think that you know the Midwest. They are Charlotte. passionate sports fans. I mean, they 
we know how much the Midwest loves all sports. I mean, it, it's really just a, a fan base that follows college football, the NFL, basketball, uh, baseball. I mean, I, I really think it's basketball country up in Indiana. But uh, they follow a major league team as well. But, uh, yeah, you, I agree. I think that Nashville and Montreal are, are the two cities. If you put a team in Charlotte, I'm just not buying it because they haven't really supported their teams that well when they lose. Yeah, when they win, they're there. But, but I mean, if, if, if you look at how bad the, the, the fan turnout was this year for the Panthers, I mean, it was down. It was embarrassing. For the it National was. Football League to have to put tarps over a lot of their seats so it doesn't look so empty, it's embarrassing. But if you did that, the only way to make that work, the Braves have to be in that division, whatever division that is. Because you're going to have to have people care about and come over and watch the Braves six to eight times a year. And then I would say on that note... Let's say they don't put Montreal in. Let's say it's Nashville and Charlotte. Then you got to put the Nashville team in with the Braves and Charlotte. What would might would most likely happen? You'll add one to the American League, one to the National League, and we'll go from having three five team uh, divisions to four four team divisions. And at that point, I don't know if that means that they would do what the NFL does and expand the playoffs, where you get seven with the one by. I think there's too many teams making the playoffs in Major League Baseball right now as it is. I'm I'm really concerned that as they go to add teams, that it's going to cheapen the regular season, and that's the last thing anybody wants. You know, they already have, because with Philadelphia and Arizona going to the World Series the last two years in uh, in the National League, those weren't the two best teams. They, those weren't even the two two of the, the top three or four teams in the National League going into, into the playoffs. So I... That's been my biggest concern. When they went to six, I was like, all right, I get it. But I would have liked it better if when we went to six in each conf- or, uh, league, that it was because you're taking four division titles in just two wild cards. And we're not at that yet. You, you know, obviously, the math doesn't work. But I'm saying if you're going to do that, you, you need more teams in the league. Because I don't ever want to get to the point of the NBA or the NHL where the regular season has become, who cares, we'll see you in April. Right? Most fans, they tune into the NBA and the NHL at the end of, the, at the end of the, their the, uh, sports calendar year. There's not a lot of people that I know that are getting locked in to a, an NBA basketball game, they would probably be watching this weekend because they're so bored, but they decide to have this stupid uh, NBA uh, All-Star weekend and nobody's watching that. So I'm like, what are we <laughs> doing here? I mean, it's one after another. Anyways, you got to watch me sometimes. I'll go on rants. <laughs> oh, I, I go on rants on my show too. Um, I, I just think... You know, there's an emptiness when football is over. You know, the, you, you lose a lot of you know the people that, that watch football. And uh, right now with Major League Baseball, college basketball, the NBA, uh, you know, sports fans are just trying to clean on to something. I mean, I'm a fan of all the sports. I mean, so, I mean, I know that the Daytona 500 um, happened. And, you know, I, 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 I recognize who wins, but, you know, I'm not really that – big of a nascar fan and i, I know i probably have ticking off some of your uh, audience members there mac but uh, uh i actually do look forward to you know the spring you know we do have the spring football league with the ufl uh coming up at the by end of the March. way what are they doing with that they're they're well, opening their season on opening day weekend and oh by the way the final four is being played on that day yeah that's bad marketing strategy Read the room. I mean, I I think the the XFL and the USFL had success because they were at different times. I mean, 
the XFL would would happen right after the Super Bowl. The USFL would happen in April. You know, gave it some time. I, I don't like this idea of opening the season uh, that weekend, especially with the Final Four and opening day in Major League Baseball. Uh, but and, it, it's it's going to be a very to interesting it. sports uh, month. And then to add to it, okay, oh, okay, but that's okay. We'll get some momentum. Week two of your of your schedule is the Masters week. What are you doing? Get oh, out my. of the way. I don't know if you can make that out in the back of over here, but all those helmets, those, those small helmets. Yeah. Those are the original USFL helmets from back in the 80s. Wow. So I grew up a big USFL fan. Because at the time, I've lived all over, but I was born in Jacksonville. Jacksonville Bulls was huge here. I'm pulling for the USFL. I hate the fact that they merge, but it is what it is. But they've got to get more teams in the league. And I'm glad to see that this year they're actually going to be playing at different stadiums. Last year, they played all the USFL games in Birmingham, which just made zero sense. But if you want more teams, more people to watch it, you got to get more. If you look at the leagues, we were talking about this the other day on the show. Richard, there's not a team west of Texas in the UFL. So why do you not have a team somewhere close to California? What about San Diego? San Diego would love to have a football team right now, right? Absolutely. It makes zero sense. I think they're being too conservative the way that they build it. And... Like, I remember growing up and watching all these different teams, and it was fun. And one of the best things that they did from a marketing strategy, not only did they play in the middle of spring, they were done by the I, – I still contend what they should have done is waited until their championship game would line up with the weekend before NFL uh, preseason games, right? So you, so you give it enough of time for, where, where you're jonesing for it, but these guys can – you know, can play in the middle of the summer. People who are big football fans that don't love, uh, you know, that they may not be huge baseball fans. You give them something to watch. You start somewhere around the NBA finals ending, right? And at the same token, if you, if you are going to have these teams and let's say you put another team, let's just say San Diego, right? For instance, they should have first rights to sign guys that played at Southern Cal and UCLA because those fans are going to watch their team play. If you are if you put a team like down here in North Florida, let's say you don't do Jacksonville, let's say you're going to put them in St. Augustine. I don't know where the hell they play, but let's say you're going to do that. Or let's say you're going to put them in a college you know, uh, team like you know, Tallahassee. Make sure that the fans are watching kids that played at Florida State, Florida, Miami, et cetera, and just make, make it really regionalized so that your college football fan has a reason to watch. Because I'm not convinced you're going to get the the uh, the NFL fan as much. Well, I agree. I think uh, the Birmingham Stallions should have Alabama and Auburn players. Exactly. And if it works out that way, you don't have a team close enough, give them Georgia. Give them the Vols, right? It should be regionalized. Now, if a team does a hard pass and doesn't want them, then okay, yeah, you can go play anywhere. But they should have the ability to say, this is who we've got every year. And where you went to college is going to matter because I don't care where you're born. Where'd you go play college at? Because... Let's say you put a team up in uh, the Indianapolis area. Well, then they should have a stranglehold on Big Ten country. I still think their best option is to pick cities that don't have an NFL team. So Houston shouldn't even be in the league right now. Because the NFL is now a 12-month-a-year league, right? Right. Falcons fans are watching the draft. They're watching the combine. They're everything. But why can't we put a football team, a USFL team in Columbus or wherever, you know, somewhere in that area? I don't know where they would win per uh, play per se. If you did give one to Atlanta, let them go play in the Georgia Tech Stadium, right? Do something to to make people in that area go, man, I want to go see that kid play. I really think I really think that he's better than what people thought he was. 
Well, yeah. Mac, if you remember in 2019, the the uh, Alliance of American Football, they did have the Atlanta Legends. Uh, this remember they they had the Orlando Apollo. Steve Spurrier was the coach. I mean this. This was a league I thought was going to be great, and then it went bankrupt, and it didn't even finish. In like six weeks, finish. right? Is, it, is that that league where uh, Steve Spurrier claimed a championship and they only played like six games? Yeah, that, yeah. that's the league. <laughs> now, a lot of people forgot about that league. That was but my was in- argument back in December when when they left Florida State out of the national t- – uh, the, the, uh, the, as, as I've been calling it, the Invitational. Florida State should have just shut it down. So let someone else go play a bowl game because our guys aren't going to play anyways. And uh, we're going to we're going to pull a UCF or a Steve Spurrier, and we're just going to hang a title anyways, and just put an asterisk on it. Yeah, I, I I'm with you. That it's, it's like, you know, Orlando's a great spot to put a team because they don't have an NFL team. I didn't even think about Orlando at the time. I don't know why, but Orlando's a great spot to put one in Florida. And it's in the centralized part of the Florida. You know, they've said for years, and I still think it's true, if you're ever going to have a team in Florida baseball, you should have put it in Orlando. Nobody's going down to Miami and Tampa Bay, St. Petersburg. It's a disaster trying to get over that stadium. But if you put it in the center of Florida, I mean, I contend take the Tampa Bay Rays, put them in Orlando, take the Miami Marlins, put them in Montreal, add Nashville, and then add whatever team you want to add. There you go. I like it. Miami's never going to – they will never support that that team. I've been to a Braves-Marlins series down there. It was the first weekend of September. More people were standing up at the bar in the area, getting themselves a drink and hanging out and watching the college football that was on that weekend than <laughs> watching the live baseball game that was over their shoulder. Mac, how unfair is it that the Miami Marlins have two World Series championships? I believe in that one as much as I believe in UCF having a college football national championship. (laughs) I mean, 97. uh, That 97 Marlins team who got gutted in 98. I mean, and then in 2003, Josh Beckett, uh, you know, really ripped the the hearts out of the Cubs. It was the same thing. They would bring guys in and sell them. And the yeah, fans always exactly. complained about it, but but the, the fact of the matter is they don't support their team. No, not at all. Um, I don't feel bad for Marlins fans, and not just because they're in our division. It's because you're not going to convince me that you are a baseball area that you're ever going to support your team. We have a guy that comes on our sports betting show, Gold to Go, and he is a big Marlins fan. He grew up in the Miami area. We have this argument all the time. He's convinced... If they win, they will come. And I've told him, you never have before. Why the hell is it going to start t- this year? By the way, he has never been to a Marlins game in that new stadium. It's been open 10 years. So my argument to him is, if you're not going to go, who is going to go? He doesn't even watch the games. He follows it on the game cast. You can't. You cannot force Miami to be. They thought Miami was going to be this big hobnob of baseball because of the Cuban community that moved in down there. They do love baseball, but they love their leagues. They don't give a crap about Miami, about the Miami teams. We are about at the end of it. Um, what is your walk off, sir? Before we have to jam out of here. Well, you talk about Miami sports. I mean, they did have a very good year with the Florida Panthers, Miami Heat going to their championships, uh, the Miami Hurricanes, Florida Atlantic going to the Final Four. No titles. I mean, heartbreaking. If if you are a, a diehard Miami sports fan, I I've, haven't really met anybody that's a diehard Miami sports fan, but uh, I, I'm actually looking forward to this upcoming baseball season, uh, NBA, college basketball. I mean, I'm, I'm ready to go. I mean, this is really... The time where you know I take my show into a second gear, you know, now that football season is ended. Uh, but uh, like Josh Pate says, there's no off season in, in football, uh, definitely. So uh, I'm just really blessed that you were able to to get me on your show, and then that you were able to come on my show in the first hour. And this is the official crossover show here on WQEE, and it's been a, it's been a blast. I, I've had a blast with you, Mac, and thank you so much for allowing me to be on your show. Yes, sir, and. 
hopefully we can do this again down the road. Uh, I know you talked about jumping on the uh, on the on the Braves broadcast when they play the Giants. It oh, looks for like, sure. It looks like they're only playing once this year uh, in San Francisco. So just uh, take a look at it. You know, there's some there's some odd times that those games, uh, you know, first pitch. But just let me know. Oh yeah, you. ten o'clock at night. <laughs> You're right. But just let me know, and we'll make it happen. And if you want to do this again down the road, I, I had a blast. I appreciate that. Thank you, Mac. All right, brother. We'll see you. All right, see you. Goodbye, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. We're back tomorrow with another show. Well, unless we're fired, we'll talk to you then. Goodbye, sweetheart. Goodbye. Goodbye. Guys and gals, it's time to go. We'll see you on the next show. Same back time, same back channel. Thanks for listening to Braves Country with Mac McGee and the Armchair Quarterbacks on 99.1 FM WQEE, The Key in Noonan, Georgia, and simulcasting on YouTube.com forward slash at Braves Country. Braves Country comes your way weekdays, 3 p.m. Eastern to 5 p.m. Eastern. Please follow, like, and subscribe today. Armchair Quarterback Radio, your first choice for Southern sports. Something of the 5th of September. Something of the 5th of September. She said a lot that I can't remember. Something of the 5th. Gonna get another cigarette, please. Can I get another cigarette, please? Yeah, I know I live to regret it. Just give me another cigarette, please. You're listening to WQEE 99.1 FM, The Key in Noonan, Georgia. Braves Country, this is Mac McGee with Braves Country Radio. We are bringing you pitch by pitch, play by play of your Atlanta Braves all year long. Please like and subscribe today. It's free and it helps us bring you more of the game we all love. Braves Country Radio, your home for the classic call of Braves Country Baseball. Hey, sports fans, it's Rod Peterson here, host of The Rod Peterson Show, inviting you to join us daily for two hours of Atlanta's funnest sports talk right here on WQEE. I say fun because it is. You've never heard a show like it because we make the listeners a part of the show. Every day between noon and 2 p.m. Eastern, you'll hear plenty of the best sports talk, including the latest on the Falcons, the Braves, and more. And who knows, you might even hear you. That's The Rod Peterson Show, daily at noon, right here on WQEE 99.1 FM. Dread running to the post office? Stamps.com brings post office and UPS services right to your computer. Send letters, ship packages, and get up to 40% off USPS and up to 62% off UPS rates. Nearly 1 million small businesses use Stamps.com to save time and money. It's a no-brainer. So skip the post office and visit Stamps.com. Use promo code LISTEN for a four-week trial plus free postage and a digital scale. That's stamps.com, promo code LISTEN. It's the best in sports and entertainment, and get locked in and locked down with Rhino Radio Penitentiary, 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. with your host, me, Ryan O'Neill, each and every morning, right here with the best in sports and entertainment, all the way from professional sports to college sports to River Dragons hockey and everything in between, including some of the very best local and national guests. It's the Rhino Radio Penitentiary, 7 a.m. to 10 a.m., Monday through Friday, right here on 99.1 FM WQEE. 
hockey season, and that means new merch over at ourdragonsmerch.com. Get the latest designs and some of our fun new souvenirs ahead of what's sure to be a great hockey season. Celebrate another season of River Dragons hockey by getting a new look to wear on game days, or surprise the big-time sports fan in your life with a new keepsake that will make them a River Dragons fan for life. Order online right now at ourdragonsmerch.com. That's the letter R, dragonsmerch.com. We'll see you at the rink. Brand new for the 2024 Braves Country Radio broadcast season. Along with pitch by pitch, play by play, the classic call of Braves Country Baseball, we will bring you a live pregame show and postgame show. Phone lines wide open for you to call, react, or ask your questions along with the chat. That's Braves Country today pregame, Braves Country tonight postgame. We'll see you in 2024. You're listening to WQEE 99.1 FM, the key in Noonan, Georgia. Home of Braves Country with Mac McGee and the armchair quarterbacks weekdays, 3 p.m. Eastern to 5 p.m. Eastern, right here on the key and YouTube.com at Braves Country. Hey, Braves Country, I'm Mac McGee. Join us for Pitch by Pitch, Play by Play, the classic call of Braves Country Baseball. We're bringing you Atlanta Braves baseball all year long. Jump into our pregame show, Braves Country Today, just before first pitch. Stick around for the postgame show, Braves Country Tonight, where we will open up the phone lines, react to your calls or your comments all year long. That's Braves Country Radio, pitch by pitch, play by play, your home for the classic call of Braves Country Baseball. It's the best in sports and entertainment. And get locked in and locked down with Rhino Radio Penitentiary, 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. with your host, me, Ryan O'Neill. Each and every morning, right here with the best in sports and entertainment, all the way from professional sports to college sports to River Dragons hockey and everything in between, including some of the very best local and national guests. It's the Rhino Radio Penitentiary, 7 a.m. to 10 a.m., Monday through Friday, right here on 99.1 FM WQEE. Hockey season, and that means new merch over at OurDragonsMerch.com. Get the latest designs and some of our fun new souvenirs ahead of what's sure to be a great hockey season. Celebrate another season of River Dragons hockey by getting a new look to wear on game days. Or surprise the big-time sports fan in your life with a new keepsake that will make them a River Dragons fan for life. Order online right now at OurDragonsMerch.com. That's the letter R, DragonsMerch.com. We'll see you at the rink. Here's good news. There's still a need for hundreds of thousands of cybersecurity professionals in the U.S. right now. And my computer career is training people to help meet the demand. No IT experience? No problem. Take the free career evaluation today. Start your new life as an IT pro in as little as four months. Grants covering up to 53% of the cost are available to those who qualify. It's not rocket science. It's mycomputercareer.edu. Are you looking for a reliable dental practice that not only cares about your teeth, but is friendly to work with? How about one that offers great deals and new patient promotions? Well, your search is over. Most Valuable Smiles in downtown Eatonton, Georgia, is committed to giving you the biggest and brightest smile. Right now, get a $99 new patient special, including x-rays and exam. Maybe you're looking for veneers. Most Valuable Smiles veneer special includes one free veneer with every five purchased. Or get that bright white smile you've always wanted by taking advantage of an exclusive $100 off Zoom whitening treatment when you book today. And don't forget that 2022 is almost over. That means most insurance policies will reset by the new year, and to avoid losing that extra money, you need to use it or lose it. Book an appointment today with Most Valuable Smiles in downtown Eatonton to lock in these exclusive deals. Call 706-623-0318 or visit mostvaluablesmiles.com. Brand new for the 2024 Braves Country Radio broadcast season. Along with pitch by pitch, play by play, the classic call of Braves Country Baseball, we will bring you a live pregame show and postgame show. Phone lines wide open for you to call, react, or ask your questions along with the chat. 
That's Braves Country today pregame, Braves Country tonight postgame. We'll see you in 2020. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Sports Beat with Richard Holdridge, presented by Georgia Alabama Sports Live. I hope you're enjoying your President's Day. This is a very special episode. It is our crossover episode, as we have got Mac McGee from Braves Country Radio with Mac McGee and the Armchair Quarterbacks. He is on from three to five on WQEE, right on after me. Mac, how you doing? Hey, howdy, hi, and how the hell are you? Uh, doing pretty good. Um, excited for this show. And for those of y'all uh, who plan on sticking around for the whole thing, the first hour and the second hour, this hour and the next hour, will all be crossover show. We're, going to, we're talking about everything uh, in the world of sports, essentially. I believe we, we said we're going to start off with some NFL and get that out of the way since it's a you know, it's essentially a season that's dead, but but does it ever really end when you look at the, the, the draft is right around the corner? Absolutely. And the NFL Combine in about a month, we are about a week removed from Super Bowl 58, where the Kansas City Chiefs really just ripped the hearts out of 49er fans, 25 to 22. Uh, so many things went wrong for the San Francisco 49ers in this Super Bowl. I, I actually I had to rewatch this because after that interception, the 49ers were in Kansas City territory. They were up 10-3, to and the 49ers could not punch it in. And uh, they went three and out on their first three possessions in the second half. Uh, a lot of people are blaming Kyle Shanahan's play call. I mean, Christian McCaffrey only touched the ball a couple of times in the second half. And uh, really, I don't pin this on Brock Purdy. I think that the Chiefs' defense made the plays when they had to to force the 49ers to kick a field goal, to force them to uh, not score a touchdown. I mean, they really needed to score a touchdown in that overtime. I'm okay with them taking the ball to start that overtime because that defense was on the field and Patrick Mahomes was driving the length of the field. Hats off to the 49ers defense for making the Chiefs kick that field goal to send it to overtime. But, I mean, it's pretty much automatic, right, Mac? Patrick Mahomes, Andy Reid, you, you can never bet against this coach-quarterback uh, combo in the Super Bowl, and the Chiefs win their third straight uh, – the, the Chiefs win their third Super Bowl. Yeah, so just – so I know that you, you're a 49er fan, right? Yes, I am. I have no dog in the hunt. I'm not a Chiefs fan. I'm not a 49er fan. I was pulling for the uh, the over and the Chiefs plus six and a half. That's, that's my world. We do a lot of sports betting on uh, Braves Country Radio. But I would have liked, in a perfect world, I would have liked to have seen the 49ers win that game and the Chiefs cover. I'm with you. I, they, a lot was made about the fact that they took the ball first, but it's like you just said, they were their defense had to have been gassed. I, I think that was the thought process from Shanahan. Now, look, I know it didn't work because they went right, right down the field and scored, and I get that part of it. But I think he was hoping that they could gather themselves and I, I see that the 49ers have fired their uh, defensive coordinator. Do, is that something that you think it's fair? No, not at all. Uh, he was a scapegoat. I thought his defensive scheme was great in the Super Bowl. I mean, look, the 49ers have known for their defense. 2019, Robert Sala, he gets a coaching job with the Jets. You got D'Amico Ryans doing a fantastic job with Houston and uh, Steve Wilkes, he's been a coach before. I thought he didn't get a fair shake in Arizona. He was a one-and-done coach. I thought he should have got the interim job, the head coaching job in Carolina when he was the interim coach uh, when Matt Rule was fired. And I think that Kyle Shanahan had to pass blame somewhere. Uh, they said it wasn't a good fit. I still think, you know, with the talent that the 49ers have on defense, it was very a it was a tough task. To go up against Patrick Mahomes, which right now he is chasing Tom Brady as the GOAT. And I, I think even with that great 49er defense that has the talent, they couldn't stop Patrick Mahomes, especially in the Super Bowl, especially in overtime. Um, I don't know what direction that the 49ers go. 
I know that there's talks. Brandon Staley, the former Chargers uh, head coach, he was a great defensive coordinator with the Rams. <laughs> I mean, they're throwing out names out here like Bill Belichick. I mean, come on. Bill Belichick is not going to accept the defensive coordinator position in San Francisco. <laughs> uh, I, I think that they're going to try to go in a different wouldn't direction. That be and something? maybe. I mean, with, first of all, you're <laughs> Shanahan. You hire Belichick. What are you doing? Just hiring the guy that's going to take your job? Like, like what? what yeah, exactly. There, right? Yeah, I think Belichick's going to take the year off. Um, you know, more likely scenario that I don't think I think he's going to take the year off too. Me being a Titans fan, um, Vrabel would be a great hire. But absolutely. I but I think he views himself as a head coach now, and I don't really see that happening at all. At all. Um, but yeah, that's. I'm with you. It's it, to me, it felt scapegoatish. You know, the defense was pretty good. I will say during the playoffs, I was surprised how how big of a sieve the run defense was. But evidently, I, I didn't watch a lot of 49ers games, and evidently that that was an issue all year long. But I think you hit the nail on the head. First of all, turning the ball over inside the ten, and I know Kansas City did it too. But when you do that and you come out in the second half and, what would you say, three consecutive possessions, no points? Yes. Against Patrick Mahomes in a tight game, that's that's usually going to come back to bite you. It absolutely did. And the muff punt didn't help. I, mean, I know it was a freakish play. Uh, right. Daryl Luter hit it off his foot, and Ray Ray McLeod just couldn't field it properly. And the Chiefs were gift-wrapped a touchdown because on the next play uh, – Patrick Mahomes got a Marquez Valdez Scantling in the end zone, and that really brought life to the Kansas City Chiefs. Before that, the Kansas City Chiefs were stopped. The 49ers defense was able to stop them, holding them to two field goals. And I really think that the momentum in that Super Bowl flipped to Kansas City when they got that gift touchdown. Yeah, and the other thing is, when you when you're looking at a game against Kansas City, first of all, you can't have the big mistakes because of their experience. And they what what surprised me was they actually kept Pacheco in check. He ended up with I I know the over under was like sixty five and a half. I think he got fifty eight, and on and on eighteen carries, pretty darn good. But one of the things that I don't think a lot of people paid attention to kind of jumped off the screen with me after the game looking at the stats the next day Patrick Mahomes had like 66 yards rushing and incredible he, and, and really all that was doing was extending drives right you, you know he didn't have it's not like he's Lamar Jackson going to take off for a 65 yard run to the but he's athletic enough where you, you got to uh, pay attention to him and do I think the better team won I don't know because I think if they would have played another two quarters, there's no telling. I think if that if those two teams play ten times, you're going to get about a five five split. But in that moment, when you have a chance to step on the neck of the champion, you got to do it. Because if you let them hang around, you let them hang around. Next thing you know, you're on the ropes. Also, Mac, I think that the Dre Greenlaw injury had a huge impact on the 49ers defense. Dre Greenlaw is the type of linebacker that goes sideline to sideline. I think that Patrick Mahomes was able to find Travis Kelsey on that big third down play, the 22-yard scant of right before they kicked the field goal to send it to overtime. I don't think that happens if Dre Greenlaw is in the game. I think that Dre Greenlaw can bottle up the run, and I don't think Patrick Mahomes rushes for 66 yards if Dre Greenlaw is still in the game. You know... How in the hell does he always get open? You know yeah, what I mean? Like he's, Kelsey, he's great. And although the 49ers did a great job in the first half, I feel like that's the guy that I would be more concerned about than anyone else on that field, other than obviously Patrick Mahomes. But I, you know, it, it dumbfounds me. Against Baltimore, he got 11 receptions. And most of those he was wide open. Now, I will say that San Francisco played a much, much closer to the vet, but it's unreal because – it's not like he's this unbelievable athlete comparative to the other players on the field, right? But he has a knack of finding his pockets and getting – it's almost like he wears camouflage. And everyone, oh, yeah, I forgot about this guy. Uh, maybe we should get number 87. You know, Maybe we should pay attention to him every once in a while. What was your thoughts on the uh, blow-up between him and – or him on Andy Reid? Well, I think that – there's like hundreds of cameras at the Super Bowl, and uh, he, 
Travis Kelsey had the right to be upset that he wasn't in there because if he was blocking, maybe Kansas City doesn't turn over the Pacheco fumble. But for him to blow up at his coach like that and 123 million people saw it, it it's it's just not a good look. I mean, he later apologized on his podcast. I mean, he did not mean to do that. But I think in the heat of the moment, he's a competitor. He wants to be in on that play. Uh, I don't think that he should have done that uh, to his coach, a very well-respected coach in Andy Reid. Uh, but also I think the media kind of blew it out of proportion as well. My biggest takeaway from it was I would have had a little more respect for it if when he was when he was on the sto- up there on the podium singing Viva Las Vegas, if before that he would have said, I got to say something, guys. I was out of control. I want everyone to understand that, you know, that's not the right thing to do. Because whether he likes it or not, with him dating Taylor Swift, third Super Bowl championship, he's a role model for these kids. And these kids oh, see absolutely. that. absolutely. Right? And... I don't want to get the answer that Charles Barkley gave us 30 years ago. Says I, I'm not a role model because even he right. since then has gone. I may not like it, but I am a role model, right? And I just I didn't think. Look, I don't think it was that big a deal, but I do believe that if it was regular season, Andy Reid is sending him to the showers at least for the rest of the half, right? And I get the fact, hey, you're trying to win the Super Bowl. I don't want to get, take my best dude out. Because then that turns into a whole thing. You lose the Super Bowl, then everyone's going to be like, well, 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 maybe you shouldn't let your ego get in the way, all that junk, right? But it was it was a mistake, and people make mistakes, and I get that. I just wish that he didn't wait until his podcast to apologize. He had, he had a much big, although it's a very popular podcast, he had a much bigger stage right there before he sat there and sang Viva Las Vegas. So... Well, I'll tell you what, Mac, if I wasn't a San Francisco 49ers fan, as a casual football fan, I would have thought this was an incredible Super Bowl. It It was was. the second Super Bowl that went to overtime. It was the most watched Super Bowl, most watched TV show uh, since the moon landing. We had 123 million people see it, and uh, I thought it was a great Super Bowl. A lot of people were skeptical about, oh, here we go again. It's another Chiefs 49ers Super Bowl. We saw this four years ago, Uh, but I was impressed. Uh, The Super Bowl turned out great and uh the, the Chiefs end up winning it on a walk-off touchdown to Nico Hardman I mean, who would have thought this was a guy that was written off the Chiefs let him go the Jets could not utilize him the Chiefs end up getting him back and that just tells you that when you're in a system you can thrive and Nico Hardman you know he was like a Tyreek Hill type player you know and the Chiefs couldn't afford Tyreek Hill so they traded him to Miami but the Chiefs get it done and, and now we're talking about the next dynasty, the team of the 2020s, and uh, they're looking to three-peat. Uh, no team in NFL history in the Super Bowl era has ever three-peated, and, and the Kansas City Chiefs right now, they do have the second odds-on favorite to win the Super Bowl in 2025. Uh, but, uh, yeah, this was, the, this was the year to beat the Chiefs, Mac. If you're going to beat the Chiefs, th- this was a very vulnerable team in the regular season. They didn't have a number one wide receiver Although Rashid Rice is young, I mean, he could get there someday. But, uh, yeah, the 49ers had their chance, and they blew it. And and they should have beaten the Chiefs because they had dominated the Chiefs in that first half, and they just could not put them away. I I still wouldn't close the book on this 49ers team. First of all, anyone who wants to complain about the 49ers Chiefs again, first of all, arguably the two best teams in the sport, it wasn't like anyone backed their way into it. The other thing is this isn't the same 49ers team, right? We didn't have Jimmy Steroids behind center today, or, or uh, <laughs> Sunday. We didn't have, you know, CMC wasn't on this on this roster. This is a much different team. So for people to think that this is, this is oh, you can't look at the logos and say, well, you know, they're playing each other again, right? It's just, it's just like, look, I'm a diehard Celtic fan. When the, when the Celtics and Lakers met up in 2008 for the championship, that was KG and Paul Pierce, not Bird and McHale. Like it's just because they're wearing right. the same laundry has nothing to do with the other. Um, well, and I agree. The 49ers are going to be back next year. They actually have the best odds on to win the Super Bowl in 2025. And, uh, and I, I want to say something about AFC? Brock Purdy. Yeah, he actually played pretty good. Well, that and the fact that the AFC is so much deeper 
than the NFC right now. But you got to figure they're going to be, if they're not the one seed, they're a two or three seed, and that gives you the best chances. What they're looking at with Kansas City is Joe Burrow's going to be healthy, right? Yeah. Aaron Rodgers is going to be healthy. Jim Harbaugh is going to be running the show, not Staley. And not to mention all the other factors in the A- the AFC is just a much more loaded conference because there's a quarterback conference and the better quarterbacks are in the AFC. So it's so Kansas City could be better next year and still not get to the Super Bowl because they're going to have a gauntlet to go through. And I agree, and I think their division got a lot better, especially with Jim Harbaugh with the Chargers, Justin Herbert. He's finally got a quarterback, and I think he's going to have success. Uh, we don't know if Russell Wilson is going to stay with Denver. Oh, he gone. Uh, and, yeah, he, <laughs> I, he's gone. And then you know that Jimmy Garoppolo is going to get released by the Raiders, so the Raiders are going to be looking for a quarterback. Is he gonna end up in uh, but I do think the Chargers are going to probably be the <laughs> biggest threat to Kansas City in that division. And you're right, Joe Burrow's coming back. You know, Lamar Jackson is still in the AFC. I mean, you know that Miami, if they play at home, I think that they are just an unstoppable offense. I, I still think that you know it was just just a, a game where it, the elements were just not in Miami's favor. It was like minus seven degrees. Uh, but I, I think that the Chiefs proved something this year, winning two games on the road right. against Buffalo and against Baltimore. And, and it just goes to show that the champions step up when it matters the most, even though they had a – not a very good regular season. I mean, uh, I saw that game on Christmas where it looked like the Raiders just physically dominated them, but the Kansas City Chiefs come out on top. Uh, it's going to be tough to try to three-peat next year, but you're right, Mac. The AFC is going to be with a lot of talented teams like Buffalo, Baltimore, Cincinnati's going to be back. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of curious what Pittsburgh's going to look like with Arthur Smith as the offensive coordinator. I mean, we know their defense is great. If their offense does anything, and they just released Mitchell Trubisky, but if they get a quarterback, look out, because the Steelers do have weapons. I think the Steelers could be a good you team. You know, the rumor that I'm hearing is uh, the Steelers are interested in bringing in Ryan Tannehill. That's that's the rumor I heard, too, because he worked under Arthur Smith when uh, Smith was the offensive coordinator for Tennessee that got them to the AFC Championship in 2019. They were the overall number one seed in 2021. Uh, I think that uh, that would be a good fit for the it Pittsburgh would be Steelers. a good quarterback to bring in with his – but he has to have the understanding it's not automatic that you're getting the starting job because this is – Oh, he's got to work for it. This is Kenny's team as of right now going forward – but we're going to give you the opportunity, and if you outplay him, then may, 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 you know maybe he needs to be Jordan Love. Maybe he needs to sit behind you for a year, right? Um, right. But yeah, that's it'll be interesting to see where he goes. I can tell you, as a Titans fan, they can have him. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tannehill is fine if everything's perfect. Meaning you need to have a good defense, a good running game, and he can play action. And he, but he's getting long in the tooth, and. Tennessee was turning the page. I I like Tannehill. I'll pull for him, but I don't have a lot of belief that he's going to do great things because when it's all said and done, first of all, he does get hurt a lot, and that's an issue. Right. But that's why a, a team like Pittsburgh would be perfect because now it's not like Pitt, Pickett's so awful that you can't have him on the field, right? He just hasn't right. taken that next step yet. And I mean that's going to happen with you know with the young kid. I think I think one of the biggest disservices that these kids get in today's NFL is they get thrown into the fire quickly because of the money, and they're looking at the clock ticking. And a lot of teams are looking at it. If I don't win a Super Bowl on his rookie contract, or get, at least get close to it, we're going to have a hard time sustaining this. I also think as Arthur Smith is the offensive coordinator, he needs to utilize his weapons. He did not do that in Atlanta when he was the head coach with Bijan Robinson, Kyle Pitts, Drake London. I thought that they should have had more catches. Bijan Robinson should have had more touches. You got George Pickens. I think George Pickens is a phenomenal wide receiver that just does not get utilized as much as he should. He should be a Pro Bowl wide receiver that gets about 100 catches in a season, uh, but hopefully Arthur Smith had his Lesson learned as the coach of the Falcons. Now he's taking a step back, 
He's the OC in Pittsburgh. I think Pittsburgh is, is set up for success. The biggest thing with Arthur Smith, from what I saw of it this year, he could not identify that Ritter wasn't it. The, in, in, in the, and that worries you as a, as a head coach. As a coordinator, it doesn't worry you as much because I'll tell you who our quarterbacks are going to be, right? You just need to, to implement, you know, what, uh, put, put the guys in the right spots. He, he was a solid offensive coordinator for Tennessee. Nobody really shed a tear when he left. I can tell you that. I was a little shocked that he got a head coaching job, but I wished him the best and started pulling for Atlanta the year that he got there. I was like, all right, let's see what happens here. And it's just game after game after game. What I saw of Arthur Smith was, it is obvious. Dennis, uh, sorry, Desmond Ritter isn't it. And you keep trying to jam that square peg in the round hole. And you have all this talent around you. That's all Atlanta needs is a quarterback. And I know you can say that about a lot of teams. But you look at the Atlanta defense, it's pretty good. You look at their skill set, pretty good. I'd say that they need to improve line play a little bit, sure. But all in all, it's a pretty good job. That's why I thought Belichick and uh, Vrabel were going to be banging on the door to take that job. And let's not forget this. It is a terrible division. So you can win that Absolutely. division, get a home game in the in the playoffs. You, you can probably do that by going 10-7. and seven. Oh, absolutely. There's no question. Falcons should be improved uh, next year under Coach Raheem Morris. And uh, that's where I want to go, Mac. Uh, you know, I'm in Georgia. We talk about the Falcons all the time. I know that you're on WQEE from 3 to 5. And so I know a lot of uh, fans and, and people that listen to your show are have an invested interest in the Atlanta Falcons, a team that's turned into a new chapter. Raheem Morris... He's got a new philosophy. I think that the first thing that the Falcons need to address is getting a quarterback in there. And uh, I would waste no time. I would pick a quarterback in the 2024 NFL Draft. Uh, even if you get a veteran in there, like maybe a Carson Wentz, because he's worked with Zach Robinson, the new offensive coordinator. You let Carson Wentz get in, and maybe he wins the starting job, and whoever they draft in the 2024 NFL Draft can sit behind Carson Wentz for a year. Now you have the quarterback of the future. Carson Wentz knows Zach Robinson's system, and, and he could get the job done. Uh, I think if Jaden Daniels is on the board, you go get him. But there's also Michael Penix Jr. There's J.J. McCarthy. There's Bo Nix. You have got to draft a quarterback. I know the latest mock draft I saw, Mac, they got them taking Dallas Turner. I mean, yeah, you could use an edge rusher. I, I really think you go get Chase Young. I, I think you give whatever I mean, Chase Young wants. Because uh, I don't think the 49ers are, are going to afford to keep him. But I, I think the Falcons need to get a quarterback in the 2024 draft. Yeah, I – okay, so for me it's a hard pass on Chase Young because after what I saw in the, in the NFC Championship game where he just – he, he, he didn't want to get dirty. He, you, you know, it's one thing to have an edge rusher, but I don't want to overpay for an edge rusher when he's not going to get his nose bloody. So, but he did have a good Super Bowl. He did have a good Super Bowl, and I get that. But that goes to the well. What the hell is going on? Were you, are you are you going to constantly be making business decisions your entire career where you're worried about that next contract and you don't want to get hurt? If I because I, I'm going off the assumption that he's going to get a big. A big pile of cash, right? Right. If he's getting a big pile of cash, I just don't think Chase Young is it. I think he's a very good uh, edge rusher. I think you're great to have him in when you know it's second long or third down. But I'm going to be a little uh, hesitant to give a lot of money to a guy that I'm like, well, we can't use him on first down. Well, we can't use him on the goal line because he's going to get pushed around like a rag doll. So, that, so, that <laughs> would be, so let, let me throw a scenario out at you. I talked about this last year didn't happen but now arthur smith's gone you don't have to listen to what he thinks is a quarterback to go get justin fields and let's go you get yeah. justin fields in the atlanta falcons offense with b john robinson algier coming off the bench or even when something scary what if you ran the wishbone no one would know what the hell to do with that and then of course you still got kyle pitch you got drake london you got some talent across the board and I don't think you have to give up a number one pick. I think because I think Chicago is 
going to draft a quarterback. If they weren't drafting a quarterback, I feel like they're, that they're trading out of that, right? Right. So if Chicago's drafting a quarterback, they're not going to get stuck with Justin Fields going into camp because then there's going to be a lot of, of a, you know, who's the starter junk going on. So they're going to want to trade earlier than later because if they trade too late, then they're going to be grasping at straws. So Atlanta has the 43rd pick overall in the second round. For folks, uh, it's, the, it's the 11th pick in the second round. I think that's all it would take, a second round and maybe a much later pick or maybe a pick next year. I don't. Oh, I agree. Because your argument would be what if you're, if you're a general manager? You want my number? You want my first round pick? Then why isn't he your starter, son? Right? Because if he's right. worth the first round, shouldn't he be in the starting lineup? So my argument to be, and I'm telling you, I'm just looking at the Falcons. First of all, what about their turf? Right? Can you imagine Justin Fields bucking down that field, man? I I would be so excited if if they got Justin Fields because in my scenario last year it was going to be a three team trade. Baltimore was going to trade Chicago, trade uh, Lamar Jackson Chicago. This was during the hold the holdout. They didn't think it was going to get done. We would get Justin Fields and then picks would go to Baltimore. Where am I wrong? No, you're absolutely right. That would be the dream scenario for Justin Fields to come home, a Kennesaw native, and played football at Harrison. He he did play also at the University of Georgia, went on to Ohio State. He is a talent that I think he just – it was not a good fit in Chicago. I mean, Chicago is you know outdoors, on grass, cold weather. I mean, he does have a big arm, but uh, Matt Eberflus is a defensive guy. I think that – uh, Raheem Morris, here's the thing about Raheem Morris. He knows both sides of the ball. He's been a wide receivers coach. He's been a defensive coordinator. Uh, I think he has time to flourish. He's been a head coach before in Tampa, and he's had success. When he was younger, you know, they did go 10-6 and six in one of his years in Tampa. I think that I think Justin Fields could flourish under Zach Robinson's system, and, and really this is going to be the identity of, of the Atlanta Falcons, we could end up seeing Michael Vick 2.0, and I cannot wait. Yeah, you're right, Mac. Let's let's try to get Justin Fields. Do whatever it takes. Offer him a second round pick, and let's go. Here's something else to keep in mind too: if they want to sweeten the pot or whatever, or maybe they don't even have to lose a second round pick. They've got two number threes this year because they got the one from Jacksonville, right? The Calvin Ridley trade, exactly. Right. So you might be able to just pair the two threes for him and not even give up a two. Or maybe you give up a two and a, a four or a five. Okay, whatever. You hate to lose that pick. But at the same token, you've got two number threes, so you're, it's going to make up for it. But I would think a second round and like a fifth or a sixth this year would get the deal done. We will be back in a flash here on Braves Country Radio. Enjoy sun-drenched days, epic stays, and plenty of room to roam in Greater Fort Lauderdale. Our hotels, attractions, and restaurants have taken the Visit Lauderdale Safe and Clean Pledge so you can relax and explore with confidence. When you are ready for that well-deserved staycation, our 23 miles of golden beaches await. Find wide open spaces to hike, bike, kayak, and paddleboard. Visit your favorite attractions, then dine out in style in dining rooms or al fresco on waterfront patios. Learn more at sunny.org. Hey, Braves Country, this is Mac McGee with Braves Country Radio. We are bringing you pitch by pitch, play by play of your Atlanta Braves all year long. Please like and subscribe today. It's free, and it helps us bring you more of the game we all love. Braves Country Radio, your home for the classic call of Braves Country Baseball. Hey, sports fans, it's Rod Peterson here, host of The Rod Peterson Show, inviting you to join us daily for two hours of Atlanta's funnest sports talk right here on WQEE. I say fun because it is. You've never heard a show like it because we make the listeners a part of the show. Every day between noon and 2 p.m. Eastern, you'll hear plenty of the best sports talk, including the latest on the Falcons, the Braves, and more. And who knows, you might even hear you. That's The Rod Peterson Show, daily at noon, right here on WQEE 99.1 FM. 
Are you looking for a reliable dental practice that not only cares about your teeth, but is friendly to work with? How about one that offers great deals and new patient promotions? Well, your search is over. Most Valuable Smiles in downtown Eatonton, Georgia is committed to giving you the biggest and brightest smile. Right now, get a $99 new patient special, including x-rays and exam. Maybe you're looking for veneers. Most Valuable Smiles veneer special includes one free veneer with every five purchased. Or get that bright white smile you've always wanted by taking advantage of an exclusive $100 off Zoom whitening treatment when you book today. And don't forget that 2022 is almost over. That means most insurance policies will reset by the new year, and to avoid losing that extra money, you need to use it or lose it. Book an appointment today with Most Valuable Smiles in downtown Eatonton to lock in these exclusive deals. Call 706-623-0318 or visit mostvaluablesmiles.com. It all starts with just one thing. When recycling, rinse out jars and cans and avoid recycling wax paper or paper soiled with food. This will reduce recycling contamination. Find tips and more at OneThingUS.com. What's your one thing? Braves country today. We're talking southern sports. We go live 3 to 5 weekdays right here on WQEE. Braves country today. Southern sports talk with the voice of Braves country baseball, Mac McGee. Joined every day from sports analysts from all over Braves country. Talking college football, the NFL, Major League Baseball, and what's trending in the world of sports. Braves country today. We go live 3 to 5 weekdays right here on WQEE. All right, Mac. Well, let's go ahead and switch gears and let's talk about uh, Major League Baseball because, you know, you have a show called Braves Country Radio with Mac McGee and the Armchair Quarterback. So you talk a lot of Braves on your show. You also do play-by-play for the Braves. And I know you're excited about the Braves season. I'm excited about the Braves season. They went 104-58. and I was actually looking at their stats earlier before we came on this show. Just, it, it just... Blows off the chart. Their offensive stats, and, and by the way, they actually have two good Cy Young potential pitchers in Spencer Strider and Max Fried. I know Max Fried went 8-1 and one last year. He didn't have a whole lot of starts. But Max Fried should be fresh going into 2024, and also Spencer Strider. I mean, you got two aces that are going to have that starting rotation. It also with, with Chris Sale, I mean, they got Bryce Elder. I like their pitching staff, but really it's the offense that's going to help the Braves win a lot of games in the regular season. But that Achilles heel, Mac, has got to be the Philadelphia Phillies. I mean, how many times have we seen the Braves match up against the Phillies in the divisional round, and they end up going to Philly tied 1-1? I mean, you have got to win at Truett's Park if the Braves do face the Phillies in the divisional round, they got to go up 2-0. I mean, last year, I mean, Ranger Suarez beat the Braves in, in the divisional round. And I really think the Braves should win the NL East. They should host a playoff game. I know that you have that time off when you have the wild card round and, and the Phillies were able to get some momentum. But uh, what do you think about, really, the Braves just getting over the hump and at least getting to the NLCS, but really, I think this is a World Series team. I mean, they have the second odds-on favorite to win the World Series behind the Dodgers, and that's really because the Dodgers are a great regular season team. But what do you think about the Braves' chances in 2024, and really, are are they the team to beat? Yes, so, uh, well, first of all, when it comes to the Dodgers, I don't worry about the Dodgers, not this year. Because if you look at everything that they added – they're still they don't know what they're going to get from Walker Buehler. That's number one. Number two, Shohei Otani's not pitching this year, y'all. So he's just he's a he's a high paid DH. Now I I know they pushed all the money back, and so they're not getting hit with it. So they're going to bring in Tyler Glass now. I get that he's got a lot of talent. Tyler Glass has had a very difficult time staying healthy. But we know the Dodgers are going to win their division. What we're concerned with is. And they talked about this at Braves Fest. It's it's World Series or bust, right? Because no right. longer now. Granted, we still got to get there. I don't want everyone to think that it's just a shoe in. One way to prevent from having the Philadelphia Phillies knock us out of the playoffs would be let's just go sweep them this this regular season. Let's knock them out and and, and just make sure they don't make the playoffs. But the other thing would be they've got to make 
assuming we win our division and assuming our division the, the, that the division champion, the NL East champion, is one of the top two records in the NL means you get that that week off. Uh, the it's almost a week off. They've got to find out find a way to navigate the off season. I mean the uh, excuse me the the, the off week because back to back years they've gone in and I know they tried something different this time. They they did their simulation games that didn't work. But they got to figure out something because when it's all said and done, it was real. The real reason why the Atlanta Braves didn't win that series is the offense didn't show up. Um, you can point to the starting pitching. Bryce Elder being your number three starter was a problem. No one saw the Charlie Morton thing coming. But at the same token, I would argue, that we, we talk about this at the deadline. This isn't, you know, uh, hindsight 2020 kind of stuff. At the deadline, we talked about the fact that Max Fried was on the IL. You didn't know what you were going to get from him when he came back. Kyle Wright was on the IL. You didn't know what you were going to get from him, and I, we didn't get anything. They didn't go out and get a damn starting pitcher, and that was a problem. This year, assuming they can keep these guys somewhat healthy, man, we've got a bad boy pl- pitching game three. We've got Chris Sale. And if he can stay healthy, and Charlie Morton is a four, nobody wants to see that team. And I think they needed some dogs in that locker room, and evidently, I don't know enough about them, but Chris Sale supposedly has that, uh, for lack of a better term, that alpha dog personality where he is going to go in and take leadership of that locker room. And I, I think that's huge. Also, Mac, I got a good feeling about this year because for the first time, we're not losing a big time free agent. You know, the year before we lost Dansby Sponson to the Cubs, right. and uh, but Orlando Arcia actually filled in nicely uh, this season. I mean, the big bats are showing up. I mean, you got Ronald Acuna Jr., the reigning MVP. I mean, historic. 2023 season with 41 home runs and over 70 stolen bases. Matt Olson with 54 home runs. I mean, just this lineup is just potent. They just got to show up in the postseason. I think the Braves are going to have a great regular season. 104 games last year. I think they could duplicate that. Uh, but also, uh, what do you think about the bullpen? Do you think the bullpen has improved from last season? Or what are some of the names that we expect to see in that bullpen for the Braves coming up this season? Yes, yeah, so along with adding that dog, that that bulldog mentality with Chris Sale, we get an old face to help us win it all in 2021. Tyler Matzik is back. And they're yes. expecting him to be hitting the ground running. They're not expecting him to, you know, this isn't a deal where we're like, oh, we hope by the All-Star right now. He should be in the bullpen ready to roll by opening day. Do I think he's going to come out with Rose? No, he's going to struggle because – that's what bullpen does. Anyone that panics over the bullpen in April doesn't understand that it's not the same bullpen by July, August. So I, I love the fact it's not, I don't know if you would call it an addition, but he's, he's healthy. I love the fact that they added Aaron bummer. Aaron bummer is a phenomenal left-handed pitcher that they're bringing in. I know if you look at his numbers, you're, you're, you're not very, uh, uh, they don't really wow you. But really well, remember, he, he pitched in the American League, and, and we all know that the ERA in the American League is just a, a little – because they're just – they're used to the DH, and they, they the offensive numbers are just bigger in the American League. Well, also, something to, t- to keep in mind when you talk about – if you look at the numbers from Chris Sale and Aaron Bummer, specifically talking about the White Sox and the Red Sox, the defense of the Red Sox and the White Sox – were at the bottom of the league last year. Aaron Bummer is a ground ball pitcher. Aaron Bummer is a guy, he's a lefty, uh, has kind of a funky delivery. And what you're going to see is a guy that comes in, and though he throws hard, what he tries to do is he tries to induce ground balls. Well, we know that the Braves' defense is top-notch. So you're talking about a guy that you're going to go in and you're going to bring Aaron Bummer early part of the season. I think what you're going to see is, let's say there's runners on first and second, Two outs, 
sixth, seventh inning. They're trying to kill the rally. Aaron Bummer's being asked to come in and put out the fire, but what they're looking for, hopefully, is inducing a six four three inning inning double play and let's go and let's go grab the bats. Um on top of that, obviously the big signing in the offseason was Ronaldo Lopez, and a lot of folks don't know what to expect from him. Four year thirty deal. He is, if you look at his splits, now they're going to give him every opportunity to start. But I'm pulling for him to be in the bullpen. And the reason being is if you look at his splits, he is a much more dominant pitcher when he's in the bullpen than is he as a starting pitcher. And the main reason for that is his velocity has been higher when he's been in the bullpen. I guess because he just lets it fly as opposed to going, hey, I got to make this five or six innings. The other thing is, you don't see him a second time. You don't see him a third time. So what you get is what you get. And the Braves batters at Braves Fest talked about how they remembered playing against Ronaldo Lopez in the series last year when they played the White Sox and how they felt like he was the best pitcher on the field that day. So they're going to give him a chance to start. And he may start in the bullpen, I mean, in the rotation. But I think when it's all said and done, Ronaldo Lopez is in our bullpen. And then Pierce Johnson got re-signed. Joe Jimenez re-signed. Iglesias is back. The other names that you want to keep an eye on, Daysball Hernandez and Jackson Stevens. Jackson Stevens was brought back, and Daysball Hernandez is a guy they're really high on. On the left-hand side... We talked about Matzik. We talked about Bummer. A.J. Minter's back. And then two guys to keep an eye on that don't expect to break with the team, but they they still have options, so they're fine with sending them down. Dylan Lee, who was big-time injury bug last year, and then the kid they got in the trade from Texas, Ray Kerr. And people who don't know a lot about Ray Kerr, all I can tell you is this. He's a left-hander, kind of a late bloomer. He's a left-hander. They have several years of control on him, and he throws high 90s gas, a lot of swing and miss. So that I think this bullpen, if you put Daysball Hernandez in the bullpen on day one, I would say it's the best bullpen in baseball. Mac, I do want to talk about Ian Anderson because he missed the entire 2023 season, had Tommy John surgery. Is he going to be back in 2024, or is he still recovering from Tommy John? So they expect him back, but not at the beginning. And this is what they always tell you, and I'm, I'm just telling you from experience of following this junk from all teams because I play a lot of fantasy baseball as well. They're trying to tell you sometime after Memorial Day to, to, to expect him to, to be back. I'm saying best-case scenario is going to be after the All-Star break because every time they say that, all it takes is one little setback, and they, and they shut the guy down for two or three weeks, right? Right. I believe what would happen with Ian Anderson, if you remember last year, the injuries that the Braves had in the starting rotation and all the up and downs. I mean, remember, I think a lot of people forget this. Opening day rotation means nothing. It was Jared Schuster and Dylan Dodd. They they were opening day rotation. Schuster's now long, no longer with the organization, and Dodd is a guy who come in, could come in and make some starts, but he's not being projected anywhere close to the starting rotation. I would say best case scenario, Ian Anderson gets somewhere between five to 10 starts this year. And they may be sporadic. You may get Ian Anderson when, let's say best case, let's say he is ready by sometime in June. You might only get two starts from him in June and they send him down. Because as long as they got options, they can keep sending him down. We will be back in a flash here on Braves Country Radio. Hey, Braves Country, this is Mac McGee with Braves Country Radio. We are bringing you pitch by pitch, play by play of your Atlanta Braves all year long. Please like and subscribe today. It's free, and it helps us bring you more of the game we all love. Braves Country Radio, your home for the classic call of Braves Country Baseball. Hey, 
Hey, sports fans, it's Rod Peterson here, host of The Rod Peterson Show, inviting you to join us daily for two hours of Atlanta's funnest sports talk right here on WQEE. I say fun because it is. You've never heard a show like it because we make the listeners a part of the show. Every day between noon and 2 p.m. Eastern, you'll hear plenty of the best sports talk, including the latest on the Falcons, the Braves, and more. And who knows, you might even hear you. That's The Rod Peterson Show, daily at noon, right here on WQEE 99.1 FM. Are you looking for a reliable dental practice that not only cares about your teeth, but is friendly to work with? How about one that offers great deals and new patient promotions? Well, your search is over. Most Valuable Smiles in downtown Eatonton, Georgia is committed to giving you the biggest and brightest smile. Right now, get a $99 new patient special, including x-rays and exam. Maybe you're looking for veneers. Most Valuable Smiles veneer special includes one free veneer with every five purchased. Or get that bright white smile you've always wanted by taking advantage of an exclusive $100 off Zoom whitening treatment when you book today. And don't forget that 2022 is almost over. That means most insurance policies will reset by the new year, and to avoid losing that extra money, you need to use it or lose it. Book an appointment today with Most Valuable Smiles in downtown Eatonton to lock in these exclusive deals. Call 706-623-0318 or visit mostvaluablesmiles.com. Mac, in your opinion, uh, what are some breakout stars that could uh, really have an impact on the Braves this season. Uh, I, I was looking at some of the, the top prospects. I, I really like A.J. smith Uh But is there any position players that, that could get a breakout role? That Yeah, so uh, I would say one of the guys would be our new starting left fielder, Jerry uh, Kalanick. And for people who aren't familiar with him, so Eddie's gone, Eddie Rosario's gone, and Kevin Pillar is gone as well. And the main reason why Kevin Pillar is gone, look, I heard this in an interview with AA, and I'm telling you he didn't name him by name, but he might as well have. He talked about building the bench, and he said being able to bring guys in that are acceptance or accepting of knowing that they're not going to be out there every day, right? Kevin Pillar in some post-game interviews last year, if you, if you saw him, he had a couple of big pinch hits, a couple of big games, not many, but a big, big games throughout the year. And one of the things I heard him say twice in those post-game interviews, you know, where they're dousing him with Gatorade and all that stuff, is that if I, have a, if I have a chance to play every day, I can still hit. And I think it wasn't really a jab towards Snicker or AA. I think it was a jab towards Eddie Rosario. But I believe that's why Plar's not back. It's not just the fact that the Braves may not, may not have wanted him back, but also I think Plar wanted to go Paul wants to go somewhere, and I'm just going to use this as an example, maybe a bad example. Paul would rather play for the Kansas City Royals in left field for 140 games a year than play for the Atlanta Braves for 20 games a year, right? So, Jerry Kellenick, who came over in the Seattle trade, and people may wonder, like, well, why in the world did it? I think it's going to be a bigger deal than what people realize. Because Jerry Kellenick, one of his problems was last year, so he started, He got off to a hot start, and then he had a very infamous situation where he kicked a bucket or something. He kicked like, like a Gatorade bucket or something. And um, the, the short of it is it put him out, and when he came back, he struggled. But last year, all in all, for the 2023 season, Kellenick hit 11 home runs, 49 RBI had an OPS of, I believe it was just under, it, w- it was very short. I'm trying to pull it up right now. Um, I want to say that the, that the OPS was just under eight and he played sparingly. He did have 49 RBIs by the way, which is not nothing. Right now. Now, now this is a guy that played about a little over half the year. In Seattle's offense and in the Seattle Mariners uh, stadium, he's, he's heading to Atlanta, short porch, incredible offense. I think Jared Kellenick could be a guy that people are like, why did they trade him away? But what it had to do with is that Seattle was trying to move money and Atlanta was willing to pay 
to get Kellenic over, and they didn't have to give up a whole lot as far as prospects. And so I've seen it and realized something about Kellenic. So they have a few years of control left with him as well. He's 24 years old. He'll be 25 in July. And for people who don't follow baseball, 26, 27 years old is where they believe is when a hitter takes off, right? So this kid could be, and if you're, uh, I'll tell you what, we'll do it next hour because we're about to run out of time, but I'll give you what okay. I would give as the uh, batting order, okay, for for, uh, for next year. I'll let you, uh, we got about 30 seconds. Okay. Well, Mac, I am so excited that you were able to, to come on my show. It's the first crossover show with the sports be the Richard Holdridge and Braves Country Radio with Mac McGee and the Armchair Quarterbacks. I'm going to be on Mac's show in the next hour. Thank you so much, everybody, for uh, listening to another episode of the Sports Beat with Richard Holdridge. Like and subscribe to the Facebook channel. Subscribe to the YouTube channel as well. I'm also found on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, wherever you get your podcasts. Hope everybody has a great rest of your day, and we will talk to you tomorrow. Bye, everybody. Country Radio is next, y'all. Keep it locked in. Goodbye, sweetheart, well, it's time to go. We're back tomorrow with another show. Well, unless we're fired, we'll talk to you then. Goodbye, sweetheart, goodbye. Goodbye. Guys and gals, it's time to go. We'll see you on the next show. Same back time, same back channel. Thanks for listening to Braves Country with Mac McGee and the Armchair Quarterbacks on 99.1 FM WQEE, The Key in Noonan, Georgia, and simulcasting on youtube.com forward slash at Braves Country. Braves Country comes your way weekdays, 3 p.m. Eastern to 5 p.m. Eastern. Please follow, like, and subscribe today. Armchair Quarterback Radio, your first choice for Southern sports. September, something of the fifth of September. She said a lot that I can't remember. Something of the fifth. Can I get another cigarette, please? Can I get another cigarette, please? Yeah, I know I live to regret it. Just give me another cigarette, please. You're listening to WQEE 99.1 FM, The Key in Noonan, Georgia. Braves Country, this is Mac McGee with Braves Country Radio. We are bringing you pitch by pitch, play by play of your Atlanta Braves all year long. Please like and subscribe today. It's free and it helps us bring you more of the game we all love. Braves Country Radio, your home for the classic call of Braves Country Baseball.
Hey, sports fans, it's Rod Peterson here, host of The Rod Peterson Show, inviting you to join us daily for two hours of Atlanta's funnest sports talk right here on WQEE. I say fun because it is. You've never heard a show like it because we make the listeners a part of the show. Every day between noon and 2 p.m. Eastern, you'll hear plenty of the best sports talk, including the latest on the Falcons, the Braves, and more. And who knows, you might even hear you. That's The Rod Peterson Show, daily at noon, right here on WQEE 99.1 FM. Dread running to the post office? Stamps.com brings post office and UPS services right to your computer. Send letters, ship packages, and get up to 40% off USPS and up to 62% off UPS rates. Nearly 1 million small businesses use Stamps.com to save time and money. It's a no-brainer. So skip the post office and visit Stamps.com. Use promo code LISTEN for a four-week trial plus free postage and a digital scale. That's stamps.com, promo code LISTEN. It's the best in sports and entertainment, and get locked in and locked down with Rhino Radio Penitentiary, 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. with your host, me, Ryan O'Neill, each and every morning, right here with the best in sports and entertainment, all the way from professional sports to college sports to River Dragons hockey and everything in between, including some of the very best local and national guests. It's the Rhino Radio Penitentiary, 7 a.m. to 10 a.m., Monday through Friday, right here on 99.1 FM WQEE. Hockey season, and that means new merch over at ourdragonsmerch.com. Get the latest designs and some of our fun new souvenirs ahead of what's sure to be a great hockey season. Celebrate another season of River Dragons hockey by getting a new look to wear on game days, or surprise the big time sports fan in your life with a new keepsake that will make them a River Dragons fan for life. Order online right now at ourdragonsmerch.com. That's the letter R, dragonsmerch.com. We'll see you at the rink. Brand new for the 2024 Braves Country Radio broadcast season. Along with pitch-by-pitch, play-by-play, the classic call of Braves Country Baseball, we will bring you a live pregame show and postgame show. Phone lines wide open for you to call, react, or ask your questions along with the chat. That's Braves Country today pregame, Braves Country tonight postgame. We'll see you in 2020. 